So, first of all, you know, obviously, we're, as, as music makers, as, um, you know, people who've bought equipment over the years, obviously a big fan of a lot of your work. Um, and it was, you know, when I was putting this panel together, it was, I was like, how the hell do I even start? So we've got this first picture. Yes. Yeah, sketch, I should say. Yeah, it's a sketch. Yeah. This is where it all yeah. started. This is quite a significant sketch for you, isn't it? Yeah, well, this was um, a sketch for my final, uh, how do you say, uh, final work at uh, university. Uh, I was studying industrial design uh, in Saarbrücken, which is a very nice town in Germany. Everybody loves it. <laughs> um, and um, I spared um, this project for being my, my last project uh, because I'm a musician. I always wanted to be a musician and I was playing music all my life. Uh, and um, at a certain point I had to decide which way to go. Um, and um, so I had the chance to be a professional musician, which has uh, everything that uh, life can bring up uh, you know like mm -hmm. uh, no food for a while or whatever no gigs keep, keep, no food keep your, keep your parents so happy, uh, right yeah. and um so i decided to do the very uh, basic and um promising um um university way we'll do uh, design industrial design it's, um, it doesn't bring so much money in my life mm -hmm but it brings some kind of security. So I started um, to study design and this was my final work. Uh, and I wanted to bring my both um, talents together, music and, and, um, and arts. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what was very hot back in that time, it was 89, was uh, music workstations. And the music workstations uh, like the Cork M1, they were just coming up yeah. mm -hmm. and they were like a black box. And um, I wanted something that's more open uh, and I um, came up with a design that uh, already included um, a heavy, very thin monitor. Mm -hmm. This is, um, uh, the, the first one was a sketch and this one I built by my hands uh, out of model material. That This was the way we worked back then. Um, so we had um, a lot of uh, Steinberg software. So it's Cubase in there, isn't it? It's Cubase in there. Sure. There's some uh, Apple Not literally, there. Just, just, yes. just a picture. Yes, yeah. and I took a... Um, PPG uh, processor keyboard, if anybody is uh, aware of this kind of instrument. Back then it was a, a very um, uh, exclusive instrument, and I had to, but I had to cut the keys to make them short enough so they fit in my you prototype. You cut the keys of a PPG. I cut the keys of the PPG and put them in the prototype. Okay. And that was my first, um, <laughs> that was my first uh, throw to uh, a company that was coming up back in those years. It was the company Waldorf. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the company that hired me right after I left um, university. So this is um, um, the picture that uh, German Keyboards magazine took of this prototype. I, I had the fortune that they took uh, this work that I did um, and, and made it an article in their magazine. Okay, um, even as a concept? Uh, even as a yeah, concept. Sure. So um, they asked me for a second concept some years later and I built that by hand as okay. well. So, But <laughs> that's not in there. So, But that opened the door for me um, to... Uh, the company Waldorf. I wanted to work for Fairlight or for Sinclair, but they didn't want to hire me. So I thought, okay, I'll stay in Germany. More fill them, that's what I say. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. well, they didn't want. Yeah. So I, I said, okay, I'm. Uh, we have some good uh, synthesizer companies in Germany as well. And uh, Wolfgang Duren, he hired me to be the designer for Waldorf Music. And my first uh, design back then was the microwave. It was a 19-inch device. Um, so this was your first project after leaving university? Exactly. Quite a big project for a, uh, for a new student, yes. a new graduate, I should say. Yes, yes. And it was a dream because uh, this instrument, it uh, captured um, the sound architecture of the PPG synthesizers, well known back then in the, in the early 80s. And they, they, they brought it into an ASIC, so it was possible to bring the technology into a 19-inch device. Mm -hmm. And we were looking out for a um, a very um, how do you say um, iconic mm -hmm. uh, design for this first instrument, mm -hmm. and um, I came up with the idea of the red the red knob. Oh, it's definitely iconic. I mean, I actually remember yeah. when the wave came out, and obviously how distinctive the you know red dial was. Um, but also just given that at that time you're saying there was these workstations, Korg M1, right. SY77, they're all quite a generic black boxes as you've said. Exactly. You know, I was just thinking, how, how the hell did you 
get that through the design process you know if it wasn't for a japanese company they'd be like no well, red, red knobs <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well whereas, you know waldorf this, are like yeah go through it yeah. this company waldorf had very flat structures mm -hmm. we were four people okay oh. <laughs> so it wasn't so hard to fight that through um i was privileged that wolfgang just bought me in as a designer as an in-house designer and i had the freedom to do whatever i want because they believed that i had the taste <laughs> <laughs> so i did the design and um it's a 19 inch device it's not that big of a design you know it's almost like 2d design but um i came up with that nose and uh, with a um, uh, ergonomically oriented two larger push buttons mm -hmm. that um, help you to um, work yourself very quick through the different menus that you had to run on this instrument. Mm -hmm. Well, and it was iconic enough and together with the technology, which was back then a dream technology in a device like that, mm -hmm. um, it became a big success for Waldorf. And, um, Waldorf or the people of Waldorf then took all the money they got in from that and put it into the next instrument that almost killed the company. <laughs> it was the Wave. And uh, the Wave was uh, like uh, two times the power of the microwave. And it was like much too big for a company like Waldorf to do a project like that. So you go from having Wave and success of Wave and then the next thing is to think big. So Yes. So, so, that, so Wolfgang's like, think big actually. well wolfgang so yeah. wolfgang was a visionary um i'm not aware if anybody here knows wolfgang Duren, but he was the guy who uh, was making ppg big he brought simmons drums mm -hmm. into the real world you know the the yellow drums yeah. the electronic drums the first drums that were on the market he's been distributing them he was the guy who uh found steinberg who was the first company to run um a commercial successful sequencer on the CD64 Atari platform. So he had the nose. Mm -hmm. He knew, uh, he, he found companies like uh, Midi Man, mm -hmm. who came out to be an audio later on, a multi million company. So he had the nose. So he thought he wants to be back in the position where PPG used to be, and mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to create something like a monument. Mm -hmm. So it's like an artistic, almost like a creative statement. Yeah. It is. And if, yeah. if you look into GarageBand, shoot the next picture, then you can find... Yeah. Um, I get, yeah, get, yeah. We'll get to the oh, okay, iconic okay. picture in a minute, but I want to just talk a little bit about yeah. the kind of design choices that you... Yes. Came, you know, what was your thinking? I mean, it's obviously a mammoth keyboard. Um, so how do you realize somebody's idea to make this kind of iconic yeah. keyboard? Well, first of all, um, I like the look of the Matrix 12 mm -hmm. because it was so deep. Yeah. And uh, then we decided to make something that's even deeper. <laughs> so we added some more centimeters to the depth. So it was a really impressive instrument. Mm -hmm. And then we were thinking that um, maybe it's nice to have the collapsible panel. Mm -hmm. This was kind of a remedy to uh, the Minimook. Yeah. So the Minimook was the synthesizer, it still is. And uh, we wanted to capture this kind of vibe. So this is the, the overall, um, um, how do you say, the, the core idea of the design. We won several design awards for this one here sure. in all over the world. Um, and it became an icon. Um, but um, you see the, the, the panel arrangement is um, so typical, so easy to understand even yeah. for somebody who's uh, not um, really um, been working so much with synthesizers. If you understand the Minimook, this one goes beyond so that. In terms of the core stages of synthesis, it's right? Kind of yeah. the, it, it, yeah. it reflects right. yeah. the, um, the signal flow one-to-one -to, -one to the panel. Mm -hmm. And in the center, uh, with the sliders, uh, we have um, the deeper functionality. Uh, any deeper function could be accessed by the slash button. Mm -hmm. I thought this looks like a slash. This is why we have the, the 45 degree yeah, sure. push button. So you push this button and the entire module moves into the center display and then you have more options to choose from and to work on. Uh, below the, the gray area you see the sequencer. Mm -hmm. um, that was, I didn't even know I had a sequencer. It didn't yeah. have a sequencer, but we had the buttons for the sequencer. Okay. It never became oh. a sequencer because the Perhaps, company yeah. went out of so, business yeah, sure. for that. We'll, we'll get into so, yeah. that. <laughs> but we ha we ha sure. virtually had the chance to put the sequencer in there. So, yeah, and this project was too big for Waldorf actually because um, to do a synthesizer like that uh, you need some almost a million in your back, which was not there. So, um, but there were several of these units have been sold. So rather knocking of the ego this was, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you even prepared, you know, sketches for you know, mm -hmm. Mark II, right? But he that was Mark II. And what was, what was going to be in? 
Mark II? First of all, you can see the switch from hand drawings yeah. to 3D modeling. Mm -hmm. So this was around uh, the late 90s mm -hmm. when we started to work with uh, 3D modeling software. Um, this was done on Form C, which is, um, has been a nice software back then, not anymore today. Um, we're working on a software SOLIDWORKS because okay. we're very close attached to the manufacturers. This one should contain what the wave had, but should go on top of that uh, regards of uh, sample manipulation, mm -hmm. stuff yeah. like that. It, used, it should have a big display. Like I said, it never came to birth. This You've was got these the kind of claw things at the left-hand side, right? Right. Uh, it should have... Uh, that, that was the idea to give it more usable real-time control. Um, differently from what uh, the user could experience by that day. So we thought of something like a trumpet style um, levers for the left hand uh, in conjunction with a, um, uh, a little lever that uh, Nord came up with in the 96. Um, yeah. so, um, but it was yours going to be wooden? Um, no, we probably would have gone for, I don't know, plastic. Okay. What kind, and, of, what yes. kind of plastic? I know it's all uh, like <laughs> hypothetical in the, yes, in the past, yes, yes, but yes, I just want to be clear about it. It's yeah. good plastic, yeah. recycled, yeah. yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then we had the wheel there, yeah. and uh, no sequencer this time. But like I said, this never came to work. We had the idea of using track balls okay. for the waves. So we, we had three-dimensional waves. I think and this is something uh, that's my passion. I always try to imagine how a sound could be, could look like, like uh, I almost visualize the sound. Mm. And then I'm trying to figure out uh, what could help me to work on that sound. What, how could I put handles on the sound that makes sense to me and that make fun? Mm. There's another project later in yeah. my career which will come up later yeah, in, the, cool. in the family album oh that's just no, I mean, yeah that's these just are just more pictures this was the rendered version yeah, yeah. the other one you saw was um but just the framework mm -hmm. uh, so this there you can see the this little trumpet like um modulation keys yeah. so waldorf tank yeah waldorf was no more Waldorf was no more uh, for a while, yeah, but they came back again. Yeah, you, yeah. Everybody knows so that. So were you at the job? Or, you know? Well, no. This, I, I done this study after I already left Waldorf. I left Waldorf in 95. Okay, you, you became freelance or something? Exactly. I became freelancer and I was still working on for Waldorf. So they were the client I could take with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that um, gave me my first um, solid money uh, as a freelancer. Mm -hmm. So... And um, this was the last project that we so did. You got, you got out early then? Yeah, 95. Yeah, yeah. 95 six, six years. I was six years at Waldorf, and then I thought that's probably better to work on my own. Sure. With more opportunities. Mm -hmm. cool. So from that came this, right? Yeah. Well, this was in the late 90s. Um, good friend of mine, Russ Jones from Los Angeles, he helped me to get... Um, into the US market. So uh, this is one company and the first company I, I had the chance to work for, uh, Alises, a uh, friend of mine who, who's been working together with me on this project is in this room, Rob Rampley. What's his name then? Uh, Rob Rampley. Okay. Yes, he, hello, Rob. Yes, uh, <laughs> hello, Rob. Yeah. That's a word. <laughs> and um, I've been um, acquiring different companies. I've been visiting EMU systems and, um, uh, well, Elise's yeah, Dave Smith was not there, but uh, he had um, kind of a split-off company. Mm. So I was visiting several. So you, did you have concepts that you had, like you know, your kind of sketchbook? And yes, I had kind of hey a sketchbook. Guys, yes. thinking. Look okay. what I can do. Okay. <laughs> and um, so um, and it was. I, I wonder. There's not a lot of uh, designers out there that that have kind of the same passion that I do. You're one of them. Mm. Um, that share this passion both for music and for design and that are really into this. You know, I've painted so many knobs in my life, you wouldn't <laughs> imagine. It's crazy. I still like to do that. Sure. It's, it's still my most... Uh, I, I love to so do you have that. templates you can just draw? No. Oh, okay. No templates. Yeah, it would make my life easier, but yeah, I don't like no that. No brushes, no... No brushes, no nothing. Nothing. I just take a new knob and put it on yeah. a new position every time. <laughs> okay. I like to do that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, but this was uh, the first design that we really did on the, on the 3D. The idea behind it was that all the synthesizers I knew before that were on the market, they were like more um, straight, like lines and everything was just in the grid, very important. And I thought maybe it's a cool idea to have the modules more like clouds sitting there. And um, my first NAM 
show in January that I visited in 1990, I met a guy, a keyboard player who's blind. Um, 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 Stevie Wonder <laughs> was the guy, and he said, um, he said that um, the most. I think you yeah. could that be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and this this Stevie Wonder he he taught me some very important thing because he's like when he he uses an instrument he cannot look at it, mm -hmm. and he always. He, he catches one or two positions that he can find blindly. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe this is a clever idea. Uh, if you have um, an, uh, an interface structured in a way that you can brain remember positions of a knob. So that was the idea behind this one. Um, a lot of the synthesizer people hated me for this design. Sure. They, they mm -hmm. didn't come, they, they, they simply couldn't accept that uh, knobs were out of a row and uh, <laughs> not sitting straight and then you had these funky clouds everywhere and they didn't like it. I hope this was not um, the point why Alesis went down <laughs> a little bit later. You've got, you've got happy, <laughs> <happening, haven't> you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still friends. Well, at least Rob and I am. Yeah, you know? sure. Rob even moved to Berlin now, so we're closer together again so but that was the story with uh, Alisa's cool yeah. okay so from one um I was going to use the word monstrosity but yes it, it's a good you know in, in a good way as in it's big matrix deeper than matrix big. yes exactly I thought maybe it's a nice idea to do something on my own mm. uh, I cannot write a line of code so I had to find somebody who could sure. do that for me mm. but I had this idea of a uh, synthesizer that's worked King, totally different. Mm. That's um, where you jump on the horse from the other side. Mm. You know, you're not um, doing something by combining things, uh, but rather having something that's already complete and disassemble it. Mm -hmm. And this was the idea behind the neuron. Um, so I found somebody who had um, software sitting there uh, that was neural, neural networks. Mm. So this guy, he said, that he can recognize certain structures in the sound. Mm -hmm. And that was the core of my idea. I wanted um, to sample an instrument, remodel it in real time, like I knew it from my visual things, you know, mm -hmm. like I remodel things. And then the software must be that clever that it recognizes which parts actually are uh, interesting mm -hmm. for the musician which didn't work out in the end, but the idea was great. <laughs> and um, so uh, you could um, analyze a piano, for example, and then you could um, choose from different parameters of a piano. You could change the strings of being metallic mm -hmm. to being made of plastic. Mm -hmm. You could change the casing of being wood to being steel. Mm -hmm. So this was the idea I had, yeah. to, to uh, because it's also very interesting to, to find out how a piano could sound like if the strings are not like just mm. uh, 150 centimeters but 10 meters long yeah. and he could kind of um, this software was able to to do that mm -hmm. what we didn't know is how uh, extremely bad a <laughs> piano can sound if it's like that you know <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but um, but it it gave me but conceptually um, it was it. yes the, <laughs> yeah, the concept was good yeah. so um, but um, we went away from pianos from remodeling pianos so you could do a lot of different things with this synthesizer and um, I went to see uh, some musicians um, judge if it would be something that they find attractive for their music so again um, you, you, you create the concept just again just you know yeah. added it up or whatever yes mm -hmm. i created the concept i had some records with me i flew over to the us and i met uh, um porcaro steve porcaro from toto and i met hans simmer mm -hmm. and hans simmer he said quite, quite well connected aren't you hmm? quite well connected aren't you Yes, saying his names of you. Yes, well, I I was calling yeah. uh, Russ Jones yeah. who helped me, and they said, "Do you have the telephone number of these guys? They were my <laughs> heroes, you know." And yeah. he said, "Well, because he was the Oberheim guy sure. back then, so he had the phone numbers." And I was calling, "Hello, I'm Axel Harper from Germany." Can I? <laughs> and they said, "Well, come. They're friendly. American people are always friendly. This is something. <laughs> they're open-minded, and um, they knew some of the stuff that I did before, yeah. so I could come." And uh, Hans Zimmer, who I met back then, uh, he he was very, very friendly. He's a German. We talk German mm -hmm. sometime. Then you're and, in. Okay, yeah. and he said, well, this is an interesting concept because uh, I had the idea of this synthesizer being the first 5.1 synthesizer. So you could do 
surround things in the machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has a totally new way of working on sound with the joysticks and with a multiple uh, displays that we had. So he was part of the company then. Mm -hmm. So he put some yeah. money in. Yes, yeah, so you got this kind of surround stuff. Yeah, you see, th yeah. We, we put all the... Um, um, connectors to the side because I like the look of the very clean back sure. mm -hmm. just with the logo being illuminated and I always thought would it be nice to go to a concert and just see this <laughs> silver bar and my logo in the center <laughs> glowing it never happened you know but it was a great idea as well oh, it's Which, we yeah. can make happen yeah. <laughs> yeah so but all the cables came out of the side sure. but many people also said it's awful but uh, I liked it a lot <laughs> because it gave me a clean back sure. I like clean back you like <laughs> You like clean back? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We could go there with that one. But yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I just like... You, you were one of the first to have USB, right? You know, and yeah. the closest that you've got the different... Different, can you have got the other yeah. adapter rather than... Right. We have... Was we that have a mistake? Yes, but if... Well, it was not a mistake. It was because it's a computer inside. Okay. So, uh, this was the reason why we had this kind of connector. And it was actually not this open USB world back then when the synthesizer came to life. It was in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this port we mainly used for um, getting uh, system uploads and um, for getting samples mm -hmm. or, or uh, models yeah. from samples in there. Stuff like that. Yeah. And you're saying that obviously you're not a software programmer so you had to get someone to work on the software side of it. Exactly. Yeah. Now the software side was done by mm -hmm. Stefan Bernsey. Yeah. So he's a genius but very hard to control. <laughs> a bit like you, really. No, you're, no, it's you. No. Yeah. I'll get back to you. You are kind of yeah. contained. No, he's very hard yeah. to control. Okay. Right. Very hard. So I was like to work with him. Extremely hard to I'm control, sure yes. <laughs> and um, yeah. so we, we were divorced then in some spot. And um, before we got divorced, we thought this one, the software is going to save our lives. Mm. Well, it didn't. No, it didn't. No, so the company <laughs> broke. Yeah. Unfortunately, this was the nuke, right? This is the nuke. Yeah. It was the controller for the software. So we tried to capture some of the beauty of driving the sound that you could experience on the big hardware. We wanted to bring that into the, the small controller. Mm -hmm. It also served as a um, dongle, mm -hmm. very important, so nobody can steal the software back then. You know? Hey, you've got to think about these things. Yes, sir, yeah. Revenue and all that. Yeah. yeah. So and um, but wasn't wasn't the hardware connected to the software? You could, so you could, use the, you could use the software as a VST plugin, right? No, yeah, you could, yeah, you but could. you had to have the, yeah, the dongle. dongle. Yeah, sure. You had to have yeah. the nuke, so it couldn't be duplicated or so. Uh, this is a rendering. So, but uh, still, this product came to life. It was um, we sold not a lot of them, but the company that built the neurons that wanted the money from us, mm -hmm. they sold them. All oh, right, for very cheap money to a store. And uh, what so these these nukes? Or the nukes together nukes? with the software. Yeah, sure. We wanted to sell that for... I mean, I, rem yeah. I remember when the Neuron came out, and it's obviously, you know, a bit like the Wave as well. I mean, it's just like... I mean, first of all, I have not, not cash to spend on this. You know, <laughs> but they were amazing works of art, you know? Again, oh, so in, 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 the, in the worlds of, you know, SY22s and TG30... And I keep on mentioning Yamaha and Korg here, but... Um, yeah, they were just like otherworldly, you know, but obviously they were also financially otherworldly. They were. Likes of me. Yes, yes. Um, but also ultimately they were riddled in, you know, production problems, weren't they? They were a little, they were a little, yeah. But um, the, the way f I was very young back then, you know, um, and I didn't have a big plan of how to do a proper construction so that somebody could really build an instrument in higher volumes. Had to learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this was difficult to build, but that was not the big problem. The, there were other problems. With the neuron, um, I think um, we already knew a lot. So that, that it's, it's um, still a sought-after instrument. We sold, I think, six, 700 units, which okay. is quite, quite a number for an instrument. What was the retail? That five, I think it was five. It was a, yeah. around 5,000. Yeah, five, I remember, yeah. 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 Not for me back then. Oh, not for me either. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess I mean you know I was particularly after you 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 know the, the neuron weren't you like you know I've had enough of this kind of like commercial production world you know th stuff that I'm really passionate about you know design I'm passionate about products I'm passionate about haven't quite worked out I mean obviously there are exceptions wave etc but they're kind of flagship you know uh -huh. since you know yeah it never felt like this to me you know because. Um, Still, I was fortunate to bring that to life with the help of some friends mm. that gave me money to do that. 
Uh, and um, I'm still proud of this project because yeah. it's something uh, totally away from what um, you can find in the hardware world. It's totally away. Mm. And still there are a lot of people out there that use this instrument and that use it as an inspiring uh, instrument for their music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm quite proud of that, even, oh. even if it, it didn't work out in the end. What it did work out for, is a good lead to the next story, is that we had, ready uh, for you, man. Ready. We had a booth mm. close to MOOC mm. back in the year of 2001. And I saw Bob MOOC coming back to uh, reality again. He was mm. like really had a hard time lo losing his company years before. So, and he came back again with the Mooger Fuggers and things. And this year that we were on display with the Neuron the first time at the NAMM show, Bob Mook was right beside us and he was uh, coming up with a mini Mook Voyager. Mm -hmm. And I saw Bob kneeing on the floor with his knife, cutting out <laughs> some wood to make the wheels work yeah, okay. and uh, the interface looked awful. He, he didn't... <laughs> even for Bob? They didn't even use Futura as a, uh, as a font. Okay. They, everything was kind of wrong. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it would be an honor for me, and it really was, if I could just make that right for you. We can you take that into the 3D world, we can put everything where it has to be, and we can make room for all the elements that you have in this mm -hmm. instrument. And um, I do that just because it's an honor, honestly. Cool. So, and uh, finally, he gave me a Voyager for that in return. Okay. So this is the Sub-37 I did for MOOC. So um, my first real instrument, I, I, I had the pleasure to work on together with Bob MOOC, the inventor of the synthesizer, was the Little Fatty. It was his last instrument that he was able to work on personally. And they wanted the panel to be like 43 degrees into your face and they wanted it to not look chunky and ugly. So I came up with that curve. Mm -hmm. And um, industrial design is always a combination of aesthetics, but also of producibility. So, and uh, I came up with the idea to use an uh, aluminum extrusion part on the backside, which is very clever because you can have the curvature. Uh, the, the cost for the mold is not so expensive. And it's, it's something that really fits exactly to what they wanted. And it also had a kind of an elegance, even if it was like with an angled interface. Uh, that was the idea behind it. And it came out of um, just a question mark I did. You know, it's, it's, sometimes okay. it's like that. You, you sure. paint some kind of curve and think, well, it's in there. Sure. You know, it's <laughs> just like the wave logo that I did back then. I wrote wave 100 times and I saw, oh, there's a wave. An a and a V. It's a wave. Wave. So I had the wave logo. Sometimes it's like moments like that that, yeah, sure. that come together. They reuse yeah, this kind yeah. of shape now for all of their instruments right now. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. you did these guys as well. These guys as well. I know, I know, I know. Yes. All right, we're getting there. Yeah. French guys. Yeah. French company, very, yeah. very nice people. Yeah. And you did, uh, you, you did all these. Yes. And you actually did this beast as well. Yes. Yeah, which is like nuts. Was fun. Well. Cool. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you, Axel. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs>